uh, Cambridge Wine and Spirits. Write the testimony your best gift to be the truth, the whole truth, and never the truth. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Could you please state and spell your names for the record? Michael Young, M I C H A E L Y O U N G. David Fields, F I E L T S. Honorary Boyer B O Y E R, Investigator for the State of License Commission. Officer Betty Zero, S Z E T O K, please. Tyler Dubinick, B U B E N I K, Licensing Investigator. Go ahead. While performing a field investigation, an underage individual working with the Cambridge License Commission was able to procure a six-pack of beer on August 6, 2019 at 3.15 p.m. at Cambridge Wine and Spirits, located at 202 Elway Brook Parkway. I picked up the underage operative from the Cambridge Police Department on the afternoon of August 6. I collected all items from the individuals so that there was nothing on their person and gave them one marked $20 bill. We reviewed the License Commission's compliance check guidelines and the individual signed the Agreement of Participation, Waiver of Liability, and Guidelines. The underage individual entered the establishment and I waited a few seconds before entering as well. Observing from inside the premise, I was able to see them pick up a six-pack of beer, bring it to the register, pay for the item, then leave the premise. I followed the operative outside and together with Officer Zito immediately retrieved the six-pack and change. I asked if the cashier who sold them the six-pack asked for identification, and the operative informed me that they had not. I returned the six-pack and change, informed the cashier that they had sold the six-pack to an underage person, and requested my March $20 bill back, which they returned. I then filled out inspection form number 999, during which time I requested a manager, at which point Michael Young was summoned. At one point during our interaction, Michael Young left the vicinity, telling me that he needed to make a phone call. He returned a short while later, signed the form, and a copy was left at the establishment. Thank you. Thank you. Based on information received from Investigator Bubenig and Officer Zito's August 600H field investigation, I performed the follow-up investigation with Cambridge Wine Spirits. Through my investigation, I learned that after the investigators left Cambridge Wine Spirits, Michael Young, owner and manager, called Michael Weiner, the owner and manager of Save More Liquors, to inform that a thing was going on. I went, excuse me, I met with Mr. Young and his business partner of Cambridge Wine Spirits on August 19, 2019. I explained to them that I was meeting with them because I was told that he had called another establishment during an active investigation, which would fall under hindering investigation. When I asked Mr. Young if he called another establishment, he did not say yes or no, but did explain that establishments call one another if there's a credit card scam in the area or if there's someone underage trying to buy. Mr. Young and his business partner asked if they shouldn't call other places if they know someone in the area is underage trying to buy alcohol. I explained that if it's a kid from Region Latin trying to buy liquor, yes, but not from after investigation, uh, investigation <clears throat> and or investigator and came to police officer just left their establishment to perform an investigation. I gave Mr. Young an inspection form for a violation of Cambridge Law and Regulations, signaling another establishment and hindering an investigation. I'm sorry, what was the date that you said that you met with Mr. Young and his partners? August 19th. <clears throat> So again, um, we're deeply sorry for the violations. We don't deny it. Um, we understand that it happens. Um, I've been an active member of the Cambridge Licensing Advisory Board um, since its inception when Richard Scali was the commissioner of the License Commission. At the time, um, there were some violations in the city, and uh, the License Commission thought it would be a good idea to form a group that could work together to educate the uh, licensees find ways of preventing underage sales for minors, and also sharing helpful information between the community, including Harvard and MIT, who also have been active members. Uh, through that group, which we call CLAB, um, we've had a lot of helpful um, uh, things that have gone on, um, particularly the, when we talked about the 21 proof training, which we did uh, perform again with um, uh, Tally, Tally Schiller. Um, I was in the meetings when Frank Conley was putting the uh, program together, um, involved in helping uh, put, uh, put the program together. So I was there helping that. So my work, uh, again, I've been doing this license holder since 1978. I know I don't look that old, but uh, unfortunately I am. And I've taken this matter very seriously um, since day one. Um, my, my partner here, uh, David, has also been involved in the store. 
and in the last 41 years, one of us is generally in the store or close by. And again, it's a daily battle of teaching our employees if we should card people, when we should card them, how we should card them. One of the first things, uh, David's led a lot of our interview process, even today, the first thing you come in and you interview somebody is, do you understand the liability, the legal issues, we have to check IDs. Have you ever checked IDs before? Do you feel comfortable checking IDs? If we feel any hesitation, if somebody's not <coughs> capable, we don't hire them. So right off from the get-go, we want to have somebody that's capable of following the laws. We take it very seriously. Uh, so again, our record, we have a, a very good record for many, many years. We've gone, I feel, above and beyond just our responsibilities as a license holder to work with the community, work with the city of Cambridge to help prevent underage drinking. I think you're looking at a very narrow cross-section of violations at any given time, no matter, and I'm just sitting here through the past violations, no matter how well trained, how personally involved somebody is involved in the store, at some point I'm going to have a day off, I have to go in my office to do some ordering, I can't be at the register 24-7. And even then, um, at the store, I'm checking every customer that comes in. I am personally checking to see, is that cashier, does the person need to be carded? Are they checking? So since this point, um, we realized that there's gaps, that there can be gaps anywhere. What can we do to improve our uh, standing and our upholding our responsibility? So again, we take public safety as a paramount concern. If anybody's intoxicated, if anybody's underage, we do not want to sell them. We cannot sell them. That is our policy. Um, I've communicated with Andrew Boyer uh, some of the changes we've made. So she has copies of, of things. I don't want to be redundant. If you need me to go through some of these, I will. If you already have our ID policy, go I agree. I just want to make sure I have what you're referring to. I do know that some stuff was yeah, I, I, uh, the Cambridge Wine and Spirits employee. ID policy? That is correct. Was this in effect? Uh, yes, it was in effect. And then you provided us some 21 proof of a recent August 13. Yes, we've, we've trained and retrained all the employees. I think there's maybe one more. We had one who wasn't available. Um, we had her train online. We did an online training. So, yeah, yes. and we received an email from Tally Schiller from the Cambridge Alliance as to a training that was performed on September, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, September of this year. Yeah, we had, we had two trainings. So um, I had worked with, uh, checked with Elizabeth Lent what she recommended um, in terms of retraining or training. Uh, she recommended calling uh, Sally Schiller, who we did. So she immediately, within a week, she came to our establishment. We also welcomed um, that she would anybody else she wanted to bring to do training since we were having her training. So she did bring about another 10 uh, uh, employees of another establishment to do the training with us. Um, I thought it went well. I think our employees, again, even though we might have felt that we trained them well, it's hard to impress the importance, the seriousness of, of checking IDs and, and being responsible. So we're in favor of the ID checks. We're in favor of everything that we can do to, as humanly possible, to prevent underage drinking and or, or underage sale of minors. In one of the one of the meetings years ago in Clab, um, we came up with a, we wanted to have a universal signage in the city, which we which we distributed. I helped distribute it to the other licensees. We agreed that it would be a 30 year old or younger, because if, just for example, if I'm at my ID's 30 and, and Michael Weiner across the street is 35, it confuses the customers. So we wanted to be on the same page as far as the licensees being consistent. I was almost in favor. The only way I felt we could have 100% compliance, or anybody can have 100% compliance, is to go to Fenway Park or Boston Garden. Everybody shows an ID. I mentioned that. Unfortunately, the consensus was we were going to upset too many um, customers. Um, in particular, I used that the Hyatt Regency had an issue where the manager went and checked an ID. They had a family with an underage person at a table, and they were sharing wine with that with their child who was under 21. The 
the um, manager refused to sell sell them. The, the, um, the person staying at the hotel wrote a letter to the region, to the corporate. Corporate reprimanded the manager. So corporates, so we don't want to upset our patrons. The manager's trying to uphold the law, so it's confusing. We try to eliminate the confusion. We want to have set policies. We want to uphold the policies. Unfortunately, we're dealing with one human person at one particular point of time. It's a violation. We all agree it's a violation. We're not here to fight the violation. We're here to figure out ways to prevent further violations. And we're trying to do everything possible. So, things we did, we retrained our employees. We tripled down on improving our policies. We reworked our policy. We sat down with each individual employee, person to person, went over the policy with them, make sure they understand it, make sure uh, what the repercussions are, and had them sign that. We have copies of that, you have that. Um, we have daily reminders, whether for us, we have regular meetings with our managers expressing the importance of IDs, and we express to them, if you see somebody at the register, cash is bringing them up, make sure if they need to be carded, that it was done. If not, you go ask them. Um, we did do some new signage. We have a, a very large sign right at the front entrance of the store that can't be missed. Um, after this violation, I had several sleepless nights. One of my sleepless nights, I kind of figured out a sign in the shape of a stop sign. The next day, I made it up, and we have it on the door explaining our policy. If you're 30 years or 30 years old or younger, you must show an ID. So we're letting people know before they even come in the store. Uh, we just work very hard at obeying the law. We feel really bad about it. And again, our record will support our efforts. I think you know, we have one of the longest records um, of all the retailers, uh, the licensees you've heard today. We've been working hard. I don't think that that's happened by accident. Maybe we can be lucky, but I think we're also good. Mr. Young, did you call Mr. Weiner to tell him that the licensing unit is doing investigations for the number each operative? Okay, so I did not call the liquor store. I did not have any knowledge of the investigation. They didn't tell me they were where they were going or if they were continuing it. They didn't give me any information of what did they their provide was. did they tell you that they were from the license commission? Yes they did. And did they show you a badge? Um well, if officer you did show me a badge, yes. Okay. You, and you had a business card you showed me. I actually thought uh, this gentleman was the um, I was saying he looks old but took very soon. No, it wasn't me that because I wasn't at did the front you, at the time. Did you call Mr. Weiner and tell him that you had just had a visit and that they had done it with an underage operative? Uh, I had contacted him directly on his phone to vent with him, not to warn him. I was very distressed, as I explained before. Um, being being in this business for so long, the store is is my family, it is my life. So I was very upset. I think the investigators witnessed. Um, my actions at the time, it wasn't uh, to be disrespectful to them. Um, they're doing their job, and I did say to them afterwards, they're doing their job. I'm immediately calling the License Commission to find out um, what we can do to either um, you know, help our situation, what we can do uh, with what it had mentioned, some server training. Um, I also had communicated with Michael Warner to express my um, situation, that I was very upset. And we did discuss server training. His family is involved in the, in the um, Mass Package Store Association, so they also have training. So we did have a conversation regarding training. So we're very concerned about just you know, improving our situation, not to impede the investigation. And I was, again, I was distraught and I needed to bend, and it wasn't any other reason. Was that the only license with the establishment you called? Yes. Um, did that cause uh, mass notifications to go out for No, it did not. And the investigator proving that for board, is, is that your understanding of the extent of the notifications? And it was called, a phone call was made to Mr. Warner at Save Mark. Yes, that was the call that I know about. We apologize for my actions that might have caused any you know, disruption in the investigation. It was not my intention. I'd actually like to take this one um, under advisement. At this time, I'm not ready to vote on this one. Okay. We'll take
take it under advisement.